Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I've been doing a review of the LG Google Nexus 5 phone. And before I start, you'll actually notice that it looks like the mini version of the 2013 edition of the Nexus 7 tablet. Uh, but I just want to say that if you want to see a proper gaming demo or a lot of sample pictures and videos taken with this camera phone, or even a video in which I show you how to unlock the bootloader and root this device, those will be in separate videos uh, because I'll make this video too long. And if you want links to those videos, just simply expand the video description and there you'll find all the links. So with that said, let's start with the review. The dimensions of the device is as 137.84 by 69.17 by 8.59 millimeters, and it's weighing in at a very light 130 grams, which I believe is 9 grams lighter than the Nexus 4, despite the Nexus 4 being smaller. As for the screen itself, it has a 4.95 inch True HD IPS capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 1080 by 1920, which basically means it's 1080p HD, and of course it has about a 445 ppi. The screen itself is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and it has 2 gigs of RAM inside. Now in terms of the very very powerful processor, it has a Snapdragon 800 2.26 quad core crate 400 processor. As for the GPU, it has an Adreno 330 clocked at 450 megahertz. The rear camera is 8 megapixels with image stabilization with 1080p recording at 30 frames per second. And of course there's a flash right there. Uh, in terms of the front-facing camera, it's 1.3 megapixels with 720p recording at 30 frames per second. In terms of the battery, it has a 2300 milliamp non-removable lithium polymer battery. And in terms of connectivity, you have the usual like GPS, Wi-Fi supports 2.4 or 5 gigahertz uh, with 802.11 A, B, G, N or AC. Of course, there's also Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Direct, LTE, DLNA. There is no IR blaster, so you cannot use this phone as a remote control for your TV or other devices, unfortunately. And lastly, there's also a NFC chip. Now, in terms of storage, it has 16 or 32 gigabytes internal. There is no external micro SD card slot, unfortunately. As for the system itself, it's running Android stock 4.4 KitKat, which is the newest version of Android currently. Now let's go over the, the uh, design of the phone itself. At the front you have the front facing camera, the earpiece for when making phone calls. He has a couple of sensors over here you can't see. The screen itself, uh, LED I'll show you right there, the notification light I'll show you in a bit. Now this is not two speakers, this is, this is what it is. The right side is actually the microphone for when making phone calls. The left one is the only speaker on the entire device. Okay, so it's not two speakers. Uh, the middle is a micro USB port for connecting to your uh, computer or charging. On the left side you have the volume rockers. On the top you have a 3.5 millimeter jack for headphones or connecting to an auxiliary audio system. You have a secondary microphone. On the right you have the power button near the top and the SIM card tray slot. Um, of course you have the camera with flash and the Nexus and LG logo. Now in terms of LED notification light, you can see that it pulses here near the bottom of the device. Now in terms of the lock screen, it has been changed a little bit. Uh, swiping up from the bottom gives you Google Now. Uh, this thing still unlocks the device. Tapping here, or simply just swiping from the right of the screen, still brings up the camera. But you notice that you can't swipe left anymore to add more widgets. That is actually possible. You just have to activate the option, enable widgets from the system settings menu. Now in terms of screen clarity, let me just say that this is a 1080p HD screen. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, it's on three quarters brightness. Uh, but I'm noticing that with my own eyes, the screen is far more brighter than it is through my camera. For some reason, it's looking very dark through my camera, but with my own eyes, it looks very bright, very vivid, very, very sharp. Colors look fantastic. Screen sharpness is even better. Uh, the, the sharpness detail is fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is my usual speaker test. Volumes on maximum. I'm just playing a video from my YouTube channel. It's just me reviewing the Galaxy Note 3. So let's see how far we can hear it from. Uh, the lock screen has this cool uh, waving effect. Uh, you can actually customize the wallpaper. As you can see, you can have it separate from your home screen. The screen clarity is fantastic. Okay, so I'm about 30 to 35 feet away. So let me repeat what I can hear with my own ears. As I just said, I'm pushing the screen clarity to its maximum potential. So I'm able to hear everything word for word, uh, crystal clear from this distance with my own ears. The camera microphone might not pick it up as well as my own ears, but uh, speaker volume it is pretty good on this device. Now let's go over some of the new features in Android KitKat. For example, while you're on the home screen uh, anywhere saying, OK Google, will open up uh, Google search. 
um, you'll notice that also there's only three parts of the home screen. You have the right, the middle, and now the left part is taken over by Google Now. This is the fastest way to access Google Now apart from you know, swiping up from the uh, home button. Uh, the icons in, have actually changed, the stock Android icons rather. Uh, even opening up the app drawer, you'll notice that the icons are a lot bigger, very, very big. And not only that, they've actually reverted back to something they did in Android Gingerbread and older. There's no more widgets shown up in the app drawer. You need to now long press as usual and then select widgets from here. The default uh, calling app has been changed significantly. Um, here you'll see a bunch of like frequently, frequently called numbers and simply tapping all contacts will show all contacts. I don't want to do that because I'm not showing the phone numbers, but uh, it does that. Now there's one thing really, really neat. Obviously you need internet connection to do. If I were to type something like pizza, it'll search a whole bunch of nearby uh, pizza businesses to my current location. And of course, if I were to type something like uh, burger, it'll show up a whole bunch of stuff that's close by with burger names. So it's actually searching not only your contacts list, but also Google Maps and giving you results. It's absolutely superb. So if, say for example, this Burger King were to call me, if they have uh, an icon on their Google Map business address, it would actually show on the call display, Burger King is calling, their phone number, and their Google Map icon. It grabs all the information from Google Maps. It's absolutely fantastic. As for the default messaging app, it's actually been integrated with Hangouts. Uh, Hangouts is the video chat or regular chat services on Google+, but it's also integrated it with um, you know, your SMS. So simply tapping on a contact, if you have a phone number for them as well, tapping at the top afterwards would select you know, if you can text them or do you want to use Google Hangouts to contact them. I don't want to show you too much information because it's private, but the Hangouts app is now also your default SMS messaging app. Something that's been really requested for a long time is if you have a different launchers, you can simply go install the launcher, then go to home, and here you can select. So right now I'm on Nova Launcher, I can switch over to the default Android launcher. Of course you have this new thing called Tap and Pay, which I don't have any Tap and Pay apps, because here in Canada it's not that popular for NFC payments. Under wireless and networks, you'll notice that there's a new option here called default SMS app. Right now I only have Hangouts, but if you have something like say Handsent SMS or Go SMS, I believe there's another one. When you install them, you won't get double notifications here at the top now. It'll just select your default SMS app and you'll only receive notifications from one SMS app. And from security, if you tap enable widgets, this is where you'll enable um, adding widgets to your lock screen. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is show you uh, the, the new music change that they made. Uh, I'm playing a song through Google Music. It's muted because of YouTube copyright laws or rules rather, whatever. Uh, so you notice that the music is playing. And if I go to my lock screen now, you actually have control over what song's playing. You can play and pause. If you long press on the play pause button, you actually seek the track. Google has introduced something called immersive mode, which basically, uh, as you can see, I have my software control buttons here on Nexus devices and some Sony devices, for example. Uh, simply tapping on the screen will get rid of everything and all you can see is the book that you're reading. Uh, this works on certain other apps like I think like Google Play Magazine and simply tapping on the screen again brings everything back. It's fantastic, you get more screen space. Now unfortunately immersive mode hasn't worked for any video game I played. As you can see the control buttons are still there but there's something very cool. You ever get a phone call or missed text while you're playing a game but you have to close everything to access it? Not anymore. Now you can do simply swipe from the top and there's your notification bar. If you swipe down again, you'll get your notifications access while the game is still running in the background. See, I never exited the game. Ironically, the Nexus 5 does not have an IR blaster, yet Android 4.4 really puts a lot of emphasis on IR blaster support. So in this part of the video, um, picture and audio is entirely recorded with the Nexus 5, and like all Nexus devices, it suffers from a pretty bad camera. Uh, picture quality is slightly better than the Nexus 4. However, I'm noticing that when uh, audio recording, uh, whenever I talk, there's a lot of static, or if there's noise in the background, static occurs. So let me go dead quiet. And now I'm talking. Uh, you might have noticed that as soon as there's audio being recorded, there's static being played back. Um, when moving left and right, I'm noticing on the screen that uh, there's lag. When I play it back on my computer, it's just fine, so that's okay. But picture is okay, audio is pretty terrible on this camera. In terms of the general body, it's quite comfortable to hold and very sleek to look at. It looks very, very nice and well polished. 
Uh, in terms of comfort for a 5 inch screen phone, it's pretty comfortable for the most part. I do wish it was a bit more curved here at the edges for that additional comfort feel. As for the back, it has this very, very smooth texture. Feels very nice and smooth. Um, but in terms of general body design, it's a bit strange and odd. And let me explain why. As I mentioned right here, this is the only speaker on the entire device. Now, when I'm playing video games or watching a video, naturally, I hold it like this. Notice my right hand, I'm covering up the speaker right now. I have to move it out like this in order to get audio. It, it's really bizarre that they did put the only speaker on that position. In terms of general speed and performance, this is the fastest and snappiest Android experience I've ever used. The processor is the same thing as the Note 3, but I'm noticing that this is a lot smoother and a lot snappier to use than the Note 3. Um, speed is best measured when playing high graphic Android games. Um, the processor and the GPU in this device is absolutely top notch. It runs games like no problem at all. Um, so in terms of speed, it's one of the fastest devices I've ever used. Well, this is a phone after all, let's not forget. Now the person on the earpiece that, that I can hear is fantastic. I've never heard uh, call quality so clear in my life. It isn't the loudest earpiece, but it is the sharpest I've ever heard. Now in terms of person that could hear me on the other end, they said that it sounds absolutely amazing. If I told them to rate it out of 10, they said they would give it about a 9, about a day and a half. From 100% battery, I reached down to about 15% or 10% battery more or less with about an hour and a half of screen usage. You're talking like a bit of YouTubing, checking email, Facebook, um, and then about an hour and 10 minutes of call time. So the battery is average. So it's time to break down this review into its final score. And if I had to give it a score, I would give it a four out of a five. And here's why. The pros of the device is that the screen clarity on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's, it's stunning. You will be amazed when you see it in person. The processor and the GPU built inside is top quality parts. The device itself is very easy to modify in terms of rooting, you know, unlocking the bootloader and loading a custom ROM because it's a Nexus device. And of course, because it is a Nexus device, you're bound to get Android updates very quickly. It's already running the newest version of Android. The speaker itself is pretty loud. As I showed you in my speaker test, it's pretty respectable. The battery life is decent. I'll leave it as a pro because it lasts about a day and a half with some pretty decent usage. The body itself is quite comfortable considering the large screen and it looks very very sleek. The big screen coupled with the powerful processor and GPU allow for outstanding gaming performance and just you know media usage like playing videos, 1080p clips, MKV files at 12 gigabytes, um, you know even looking at pictures it's a great media device. Stock Android is very clean and very easy to use. There's not much of a learning curve needed. It's very simple to pick up and just start using right away. Call quality is absolutely fantastic. As I mentioned it has the best earpiece I've ever used. Not the loudest but the clearest. It of course supports wireless Qi charging. Of course, a welcome feature to Android is being able to access your notification drawer even while playing full screen games. Some cool new features from KitKat is also the full screen mode in which the software control buttons disappear while reading a book, for example. And of course, being able to search contacts from Google Maps directly into your phone. Now, there are a few cons though. The first is that the bad speaker posi position, as I mentioned before. The second is that Android 4.4 puts a bit more emphasis on supporting um, devices with IR blasters. Ironically, this one doesn't have an IR blaster, which is pretty bizarre to me. New users to Android might not like the home screen experience since you only have two screens and the third is Google Now. Of course, experienced users will know that you can always download another launcher from Google Play. However, what Google doesn't mention is simply by going all the way to the far right screen, getting an uh, app icon from your app drawer and then swiping over to the right will add an additional home screens. There is no micro SD card slot, so you cannot expand the memory. Camera quality for in terms of picture is decent, but the audio recording is absolutely horrendous. As I mentioned, you get a bit of like hissing, staticky noise when there's any type of audio being recorded. Other than that, it's a pretty solid device for the most part. Google is in the right direction of making cheap devices with powerful hardware, but we'll see what the future brings in terms of other Nexus devices. So, if you found this video useful, be sure to check my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.